Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Shukru Kuran from Boazici University. In this video, we will be covering the fourth part of the basic level of the module. We will be talking on the microscopic theory of diffusion. This theory deals with analyzing the diffusion medium that is used as the physical layer of the communication via diffusion and the calcium signaling systems of the molecular communication approach in nano networking research. In order to understand diffusion, we need to learn about the Brownian motion. And in order to learn about the Brownian motion, we first have to look at its simplest form, the simple random walk. Simple random walk is a basic motion described in the mathematical literature, first in 1905 by Carl Pearson. As the name suggests, it is a fairly simple motion, which is defined in a symmetrical, one-dimensional environment. At each time step, the moving object moves one step to the right or one step to the left. This direction choice is probabilistic, with 50% chance of moving to the left and 50% chance of moving to the right. The movement at each step is independent of the previous steps. This model can be used in many different fields like ecology, economics, physics, chemistry and etc. It is generally used to analyze several properties of the motion and finding answers to specific questions, such as what is the probability that the particle reaches point x until time t, or what is the first passage time distribution to point x depending on the system parameters. So what happens if the size of a single step is not the same? A Brownian motion can be called a generalization of a simple random walk process in which the step size can come from any random distribution. It has been widely accepted in the literature that, in order to capture the real diffusion dynamics, a Gaussian random variable is a good selection for the step size random variable. This is called the standard Brownian motion, or the Wiener process. The fact that the mean value of the dist distribution is zero means that, on the average, the particle will try to stay at the location where he starts moving. Hence, there is no drift to any direction. Similar to the step size, time step, the delta t, is also not fixed this time. If we select a big time step, we can have a general idea about the probable location of the molecule at the end of this time period. However, we will be missing a lot of detail and end up with a very rough estimate. As the selection of the time step becomes smaller and smaller, the analysis becomes better in quality with an increased price of computational complexity. Theoretically, we can reach the real diffusion process if we choose the time step as an infinite small, small number. Considering a homogeneous environment with no barriers, no borders, or any kind of reflecting surfaces, the Brownian motion of a particle in a dimension is independent from its movements in other dimensions. So, considering the simple Brownian motion, the total displacement of a moving object in a 3D environment is a vector comprised of three random variables, delta x, delta y, and delta z, or x, y, and z dimensions respectively. This is not only limited to a 3D environment. We can generalize this formula to any dimension we want. But for the sake of realism, we will focus on a 3D environment in this video. Next, we have to define the sigma. Following a simple Brownian motion, the sigma is calculated by taking the square root of 2 times the diffusion coefficient times the delta t. As described above, delta t is a system variable, which we can choose based on our desired granularity. On the other hand, the diffusion coefficient, the d, is a system parameter. Let's look at this parameter. If we want to expand the calculation of the diffusion coefficient, the sigma becomes something like this. Here, there are two parameters that depend on the simulation environment and one parameter on the moving object. Kb represents the Boltzmann constant, and as the name suggests, it is a constant value. T is the temperature of the environment, and eta is the viscosity of the environment. The sigma value is proportional to the environmental temperature and inversely proportional with the viscosity of the environment. 
This is due to the fact that the hotter the environment, the faster the molecules in the environment become, and this increased speed eases the movement of the object. In contrast, the viscosity defines the resistance of the environment to changes. Therefore, the higher the environmental viscosity, the slower the movement of the object inside the environment. Lastly, the size of the moving object affects the sigma value. Stokes radius roughly describes how big the object is, and as a re result, sigma is also inversely proportional with this RS parameter. Considering a 3D environment, since the sigma value depends only on these variables, it is usually the same for each dimension of the movement. While the movement of a single particle, like described, is called the Brownian motion and is modeled by the Wiener process, when we consider the collective movement of a group of particles ex each exhibiting Brownian motion, the resulting process is called a diffusion process. There can be numerous scenarios for diffusion. A simple diffusion scenario or process can be defined between a single point resource and a single receiver. The environment is 3D, the receiver is not moving in the environment, and the collisions among the moving objects are ignored. Lowercase d constitutes the distance between the source and the receiver. R cell defines the radius of the spherical receiver. And lastly, capital N defines the number of moving objects released from the source at one instance. For the sake of compliance with our previous video on communication by diffusion, hereafter we will be referring to the moving objects as messenger molecules, or MMs for short. Similarly, the point source will be called by the name the transmitter. Mainly, we will be analyzing two hitting properties in the system, the time of hitting and the fraction of hitting. In time of hitting, we want to learn about the time distribution of the MMs hitting at the receiver. Considering n number of MMs, do they all hit at the receiver at the same time? Probably not. Then what kind of a distribution they follow? Uniform, Poisson, normal? For a more human readable result regarding this property, we might be using a hitting histogram in which the time is divided into fixed size slots and we are counting the number of MMs hitting at the receiver in each slot. The second property is the fraction of hitting. From a mathematical analysis following the macroscopic theory of diffusion, we know that in a 3D simple diffusion case, not all of the released MMs are expected to hit at the receiver, even if we wait forever. Then the relevant question becomes, what is the fraction of MMs hitting at the receiver when bounded by some certain time period? This question will be our key question, considering the slotted time structure of the CVD system. We can simulate this environment in a software simulator with given parameter values and can calculate the resulting fraction of hitting value depending on the system parameters and variables. Considering a simple diffusion system in which the distance between the transmitter and the receiver is denoted by the lowercase d, the environment which defines the viscosity and the temperature is denoted by E and V, the size of the particle with its radius RMM and finally, the size of the receiver with its radius RRCV. Also, defining a fixed symbol duration value of Ts, we can formalize the fraction of hitting as F hit depending on these parameters. In a given fixed environment and scenario, the E and V, RMM, and RRC values will be fixed. Therefore, we can shorten the full F hit definition like this F hit. D, T, S. So, in the microscopic theory of diffusion, we set up a simulation tool in a target environment and try to analyze the F-hit values of the given scenario. In these scenarios, we consider each particle as a messenger molecule, and it represents some encoded information. Remember that we mentioned something called the macroscopic theory of diffusion too, which deals with a more generalized closed form solutions for the same hitting properties. In a simple scenario like we described in this video, it is easy for the macroscopic theory to come up with closed form solutions. However, when the scenario gets more complicated, and especially when the geometrical symmetry of the environment is lost, the mathematical evaluation of the macroscopic theory becomes much harder. Therefore, 
In more realistic scenarios, it is much easier to use the microscopic theory to evaluate the heating probabilities. After obtaining these F heat values, the next question becomes, what is the transmission rate in the system and how can we calculate it? In the next video, we will be covering this next step. It is often confusing between the terms brown in motion and diffusion in this context. Therefore, let us reiterate their definitions one more time. Movement of a single particle is called Brownian motion. The Brownian motion is modeled by Wiener process, aka standard Brownian motion. And a group of particles, each exhibiting Brownian motion, constitutes a diffusion process. So, we have given a general look at the microscopic theory of diffusion in the context of nanonetworking and molecular communications research in this video. We will be continuing with the channel capacity evaluation on top of this microscopic theory in the fifth video of the basic level. Here you can see the references of this video. Thank you for listening and see you next time.